Admiral Bill Stubblefield William. Good morning, Rob. Great to see you this morning. And Maria Lawrence as well as here. Maria. Good morning. We have uh, as uh, our first guest, you may have heard yesterday, of course, about the incident at uh, North Middle School yesterday. And uh, rumors were running rampant, as you can imagine, as to what was actually going on there. Uh, fortunately, it turned out to be uh, much less severe than some of the initial reports and rumors were. We have the superintendent of schools, Ron Stevens, with us via telephone. Ron, good morning. Can you hear me okay? I can, Rob. Good morning. Excellent. Uh, great to have you. Appreciate you carving out a few minutes of time this morning for us to uh, clarify everything that took place yesterday and how it was handled. Uh, can you give us uh, the, f- the facts as you understood them, Ron, when the news first became available to you? Well, we were we were notified uh, early in the morning, uh, well, uh, about 1130, that um, a student approached uh, the principal at the school claiming that there was a, a threat on Snapchat directed toward them uh, as an individual. Um, so immediately the student was pulled into the office. The parents were contacted. Um, you know, we're working with the student to, to try to keep them safe. Law enforcement was notified. Um, and, and we were moving in the direction of a social media threat at that time. There were some things that were stated throughout the conversation on sh- Snapchat um, that led to a, you know, a lengthy investigation. And that's kind of what took us, took us a little bit of time. So, I mean, that, that's how the whole thing started. Um, you know, and as, as, um, as law enforcement arrived, we, we worked with, um, with the city, uh, chief Gibbons did a, did a fantastic job. We worked with the city, uh, police. Uh, we also worked with, um, the, task force and uh dean olak was a uh, contact on the ground for us as well um you know so there were, were a variety of different things that that were taking place it'd be difficult for me to give you the whole scenario but uh within uh within two hours we had uh received a, a notice from this young uh from this student um had been able to pursue things online via channels uh with uh, actually we're working with the fbi at that time um and they were they were doing traces and and um trying to trying to find the source and um you know at the same time we're trying to make sure everybody in the building is safe and talk to everybody and see if they recognize uh pictures that were on the on the page and you know it was it was full blown it was impressive to see so many different um Law enforcement, law enforcement agencies working together yesterday. Ron, there were rumors of, uh, at one point along the way an active shooter at North Middle. There's rumors then that there was a student with a gun in a, in a backpack. Uh, later we saw Chief Aaron Gibbons release a statement that uh, none of that was true and that no weapons were recovered. That is true. That was, that was, not, in, in, um, it, it, that was not a part of it. Uh, Any time that, that the police are involved at a school, um, you know, it, it's nerve wracking for the community and for the students, the staff and the parents, because as things are being uncovered and, and investigated, it, not everybody's going to be privy to that information right away. And in today's world with social media, you know, people are putting statements out there quickly without having any uh, any background. Um, sometimes it just starts as a, a wonder if um, and then turns into a fact that it, it did happen. But. No, yesterday there was not an active shooter. That was not part of it. As a matter of fact, within two hours of the um, of the report, we had worked with uh, law enforcement agencies and authorities in Michigan, um, and had some on on the uh, on the way to the uh, to the location in Michigan where they were able to uh, confront the the um, the guilty party, who turned out to be a ten year old. Um, who had been doing this uh, through our cooperation with the local authorities? They were able to uh, to uh, apprehend him and stop him from doing that in the, um, in the near future. So he is being prosecuted. Child Protective Services is involved. I mean, it it becomes a really big deal, and it takes time to do all of that. And I know that um, you know if you're a parent and you hear it right away and you come flying uh, to the school and want want your kid, I truly understand that um but at the time we knew that we uh we had a situation that was well in hand and we had the right people on uh 
on the job um, on location and working with people in Michigan. Was that student enrolled in Berkeley County Schools, Ron? That student is a Michigan student in Michigan, the state of. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, Ron, I uh, uh, I understand you went to Code Orange or Code Red one, and inside the perimeter of the school, I would under, would think it would be fairly easily handled. How do you handle, how do you address the concern, the very nervous parents? But you know what, that that's really what, um, that's a challenge. That's a challenge because we don't know what they've heard, what they've been told, what their kids may have said to them. Uh, and what their experiences are. So that that's very challenging for us. Um, actually, what happened, when there's a threat on the outside, uh, just to, to secure uh, the schools, we go to a code orange, which in most cases, uh, what that means is there's a threat on the outside of the building, business as usual on the inside of the building. Um, now, yesterday, we were getting multiple... Uh, um, multiple law enforcement agencies caught up to, to speed. We were getting multiple uh, quick comments on this Snapchat while they were looking things up. Um, so they asked that we keep everybody in place uh, while they print off a picture just to, to see if anybody recognized the, uh, the, the face of the young man while they were still trying to figure out where, this, uh, where the perpetrator was. Now, did the young man have any contacts at all in Berkeley County, or is that just just got the name random. off? Random, yeah. Just he, random. He had done this uh, numerous times to other districts, just randomly. Uh, as far as we can tell, he has no ties to anyone in Berkeley County or West Virginia, for that matter. Um, you know, and that comes directly from uh, the people that we work with, you know, with the state police and the FBI going to be my comment ron that um you know randomly a 10 year old in michigan which you know there's a lot of a lot of issues with that whole piece but um you know here we are a week and a half into school being in session and we're trying to concentrate on learning and um you know and getting kids back and getting kids in the in the right frame of mind and then boom, you know, for all intents and purposes, I mean, I, kudos to law enforcement, kudos to the school system um, that appeared to do everything that that you needed to do. But, you know, it just speaks to the whole issue of, you know, society and and children with cell phones and and all kinds of things like that. I'm, is there yeah. any way that you can um, that the school system can say, here, drop your cell phones in this basket, you know, before you start the day? I mean, I'd just probably a crazy question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. So. Maria, we, we brainstorm about those types of things often. And, um, you know, we run into situations where everybody thinks that's okay for everybody else, but when it happens, you know, when when your kid needs to talk to you, uh, if we don't, uh, if if we've confiscated their phones, you know, there there becomes uh, a PR nightmare with our community and, and parents uh, feeling like that we're keeping information from them. So that that's a tough one, and you know, I. I agree. I agree. I wish there was some way that we could make sure that things were off and away and turned off and locked up or not brought to school um, because it can be distracting. But with 20,000 students, you know, um, over 3,000 full and part time employees, uh, it is social media is something that we're going to have to learn how to deal with uh, rather than falsely think that we're not going to be able falsely think we're going to be able to stop it from from um, influencing us throughout the day i mean that's yeah, it's it's a hobson's choice you have to figure uh, out what you know what's it, for it the greater good catch, definitely a catch-22 um and um you know i'll leave i'll leave it at that i i think what we're trying to do is handle things better get communication out there i think it's extremely impor important for parents um, to talk to kids, know who they talk to, know who's in their circles, look at information, um, check their Snapchat, check you know all of the social media contacts that are there, 
because just like you alluded to, all of a sudden we have um, a kid who we're having a conversation with another kid, and it's in you know, Michigan, it's hundreds of miles away, as if they were our neighbors. You know, when 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 I was in school, I almost said we, Maria, but I know that you're a lot <laughs> younger than I am. Oh no, no, not um, at all. So when I when I was in school, it was uh, you know those conversations only happened within you know shouting distance. You know, we we wouldn't have those conversations with somebody in Michigan. Um, you know, and so I mean, it's things have changed, and we've got to we've got to learn how to how to work with these things. And you know, I'm I went into the technology age and social media kicking and screaming. I was I was a, a holdout. I'm um, and I realizing that we have to learn to work with it and steer it because we're not going to stop it. So I, I really think it's, it comes down to the parents being uh, aware of who their kids are talking to, holding the students and parents uh, accountable. When these types of things happen, um, that young that young man in Michigan is, is, is now going to be facing uh, some, some serious repercussions. So, um, you know, thankfully – our students knew better, and this, this was not a student uh, from Berkeley County that did this. But anybody could have a bad day and have something like this happen. So we, we need to make sure that when the kids are in school, they know their phones should be off and away. When they're at home on their phones, the parents should be checking things out. And I just want to make sure that we don't overlook the fact that, again, everybody was safe. Um, while we couldn't communicate exactly what was taking place at the exact second that it was going on, uh, everybody was safe. Law enforcement was doing a fantastic job. Our students did a great job in the building. Uh, they cooperated with law enforcement, um, you know, and, and helped, helped them understand that this was not a student from here. This was not a young man that, that lived here and, uh, kept them searching online to be able to find them. Our, our parents, although they were backed up, and I'm sure that they were nervous and anxious about things, they they were fantastic, and uh, and I appreciate their patience. You know, everybody that responded, the staff, uh, trying to maintain order and trying to actually get some education done while all this is going on. That that's you alluded to it earlier. That that's very tough, but you know, overall, I, I thought that. You know, everybody did a great job yesterday, and, and I'm just thankful that it turned out the way it did. Ron, thank you so much for your time this morning. I appreciate you calling in and enlightening us on the situation. No problem. I really appreciate it, and uh, give me a call anytime. I'll talk to you all later. Have a great day. Absolutely. You too, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Superintendent mm -hmm. of Schools, Ron Stevens.